I'm Amy, sex educator, somatic sex and relationship coach, and sex shop owner. And I'm April, VP of an international high-end pleasure products company and boss queen sex toy mogul. We're best friends who make our own rules about who we are as sexual beings. With everything from how to be a badass in the bedroom to top tips for bringing your relationship to the next level, we have something just for you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com. Hey, everyone. Hiya, people. <laughs> Party people. Ow! How do you know they're partying? I hope so. We're partying with some Juan. Why not? not? Why not? It's so Friday. It's Friday, but this is coming out on Tuesday, so it's really confusing. Yeah, but that's still okay. <laughs> it's Tuesday somewhere. Your Tuesday is my Friday. <laughs> my Friday is your Tuesday. Okay, yeah. You know, people right. say that with the with you know they're like today's my Friday. Yeah, I've never had a job like that, so I don't know what that feels like. Yes, you. What What about when you worked in the service industry? Because I didn't have a set schedule, though. It was always different. Oh. Yeah, but then you didn't. We you always had to work certain on weeks when you or w- certain weeks where you're like, it's Monday. And you're like, this is my Friday. Fun fact, everyone: April and I met working at a restaurant <laughs> together. Uh, we worked on a restaurant on the wharf and <laughs> in she, Santa Cruz on the wharf. She moved to Santa Cruz, my hometown. She had bright blonde hair, and she had only been there for a couple of days. And she got a job at this restaurant that I worked at and got hired on the spot because she is awesome. We were slanging deep fried calamari. Yeah, deep fried <laughs> calamari, and uh, what else? We had the, what was you the, mean um, bung? Deep clam- fried bung? Ooh, no, what we, about that? We did not have that, but the clam News bake. News flash, what, you're eating calamari that's deep fried. You may be eating bung. Refer was, to This American Life. What was episode the Episode doppelganger. Fuck, it will fuck you up. All right, anyways. What was the hot <laughs> clam bank? What was it called? Hot. Remember the thing with oh the God. cheese? <laughs> <laughs> It was. I think it was gnarly. Oh God. Anyways, so um, the way I met her was she got the job, and then she was telling this story to the staff. Well, just P.S. <laughs> Can I interject here? And I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just moved to California from Minnesota, and no, um, you lived in Humboldt before. I did, but I just had moved back to California, and I never had been to Santa Cruz, uh-huh. and I got invited to this party, which was. You know, for it was uh, supposedly some kind of like she likes to party. It was like a costume party. I didn't get the memo, and so there are all these people spanking each other with floggers, and I had never seen that in my life. I didn't. I did not. I'm know. just from the Midwest. I don't know. What's so some going guy out. was like, "Hey, like, how you doing? Can I'm I get spanked, spanked? And in front like, of your boyfriend? <laughs> Fuck yeah!" So I just, I was like, "This is dope." So she bent over and got spanked. Yeah, and then I was demonstrating that. But th- that was my first experience with Santa Cruz. So and I was she like, got literally, I think I was there a week. And on her, that it was like her second day on the job, <laughs> and she's telling this story to the whole staff and bending over and talking about how she got spanked last night and spanking herself. And I did do the demo. I was like, "It's like this," <laughs> slapping her ass. And Amy was like. Got bright red, but and she thought it meant that I hated her, but really I loved her. I was like, "Did I offend <laughs> you right now?" She's like, "No, I think I love you." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, good." And then from there, the rest was history. Then we just became soul. It was, I think that we found our soul sisterness, though, because I, we we're pretty sure that we lived um, past lives together. Sorry, crystals, gems. Sorry, <laughs> crystals, gems, past <laughs> lives. Yeah, no, w- we've had moments where we we know we're intergalactically connected and so this was kind of like we were finally reunited yeah because it happened really quickly so that's our fun story everyone don't worry this podcast really is about sex and that was about we've always worked together like on and off since then since since gilbert's when it was gilbert's formerly gilbert's formerly gilbert's formerly known as gilbert's formerly yeah so and now it's called firefish and um well, we don't work there anymore, so. <laughs> and we're really happy about that because uh, it was exhausting. Have you eaten there since then? Uh, you know, I went there once because a friend of mine really wanted a shrimp cocktail. She's like, Firefish is the best shrimp cocktails. I was like, I will die if I go there. I worked there for four years. I may have had a drinking yeah. problem while I worked there. One time, these people, they were they told me they were from Modesto. Eight, there were like six people, and they had a bill of $350, and they tipped me 30 cents <gasps> and I ran out on the, st- on the wharf and was like, hey guys, you forgot your change, motherfucker, <laughs> and threw it at <laughs> I was angry then. Uh, but they did, 30 cents. Did you say motherfucker? I did. Ooh. I swore. And I didn't feel good about it afterward. I mean, I, su- I was like, I you know what? I, re- I support, I like that. I think it was when we were gently drinking at we were gently. We ge- I like that term, gently drinking. 
You know, it made it bearable because we worked there every day from four o'clock until 10 p.m. <laughs> it was pretty exhausting. I think that AKA we, we yes. needed to drink a lot. We, and we were in our 20s, so we did take shots of vodka before work. I um, And I also <laughs> do agree within the service industry. One, I think everyone, if you're going to eat in a restaurant, you should actually work in the service industry so you understand how to treat people fairly. Two, if someone tips you 30 cents on a $300 bill, I don't think it is a bad thing to go out there and speak with nonviolent and it communication. it wasn't because my <laughs> It wasn't because my service was bad. They actually complimented me on my service. It was verbal gratuity. You're the best. No, you're you're one of the best servers ever. Thanks. Yeah. You're uh, amazing. Uh, anyway. It was just, a pleasure to work side by side with you, Chip. Thank you. It was a pleasure <laughs> to work side by side with you. Then I will say this. I did feel guilty after being so angry. It was just because I was overworked and I got only 30 cents. So I could have moved to another country. And overworked is the right way to put it. Definitely yeah. Overworked. I was overworked and ate too much calamari. Calamari. <laughs> too much bung. Bung. Oh, God. Google bung, everyone. Okay, so, wait, so we have a special episode yes. here. So we got off on a tangent, but I think it's an interesting one. You know our backstory. And we have an awesome episode for you. Yes, but we, we, have a, we have a juicy topic that we have we'll a special guest shortly. here right now that yes. we want to chat with. We, Someone very special. We have our wine sponsor slash beloved woman owned and operated wine, Margins Wine. We have Megan from Margins Wine here. Megan who, Bell. Megan Bell, yeah. who's here to tell us a little bit about her delicious vino. We're all sitting around at a table on Friday night. Uh, Maria from the Good Times is here again, too, because we're going to just keep her <laughs> here all the time. We just <laughs> love her. We're just yes. abducted so we're on just, Fridays. We're just drinking some wine. We were just having some, some girl talk-ish. So without further ado, we have Megan Bell from Margins Wine. Woo! Hi, Megan. Hello. I have, to tell, I have to tell a story about I text you really quickly while she dropped off. A, she's like, hey, I dropped off a case of wine with you. And I was walking after you and I met with the copywriter, Amy. And I was trying to text, you are so awesome. I can't wait to hang out with you next Friday. And it said, it, I didn't look at it. I sent it. And then I looked at it. And it said, you're so greedy. See you next week. <laughs> and I was like, ah, texting and walking, Megan. I'm so sorry. So my apologies for that auto text nightmare. So she's she might be a little bit mad at us, but <laughs> <laughs> so um, Megan, tell us about Margins Wine. We're big fans. We've been loving the Margins Wine. Um, we would like to hear a little bit about your story, your journey. Well, let's start with the question about what makes Margin Wine Margins Wine different than other wines. How about that? Let's start with that one. Sure. So Margins Wine focus on vineyards, varietals, and regions that are lesser known or on the margins, quote unquote, and. The main thing that makes it different from wines that most people would get to try is that it's what we call natural wine. That's kind of a controversial term because different people have different definitions of the world, like the term natural wine. But in this case, we'll say it's wine made from only organic vineyards with very limited additives, usually only a little bit of sulfur dioxide and absolutely no other modifications. So... Um, there's over 100 legal additives that people can put in wine, and the company doesn't have to list any of those on the label, which is a big bummer. Um, and there's a lot of disconnect between people who are really into like eating organic food and buying local, and then people who buy their wine like at the grocery store, for example. Um, if you're buying uh, free-range meats, etc., you should be buying natural wine as well. It's the same exact philosophy. And how did you, because you come from a pretty sturdy background. You studied wine, I mean, at Davis, right? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how'd you, how'd you get into winemaking? Um, I got into winemaking because in high school, my boyfriend at the time and I were brewing a lot of beer. Huh? And <laughs> of course, we were going to get married. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> we decided we would start a joint winery brewery. So that was the original reason I went to Davis to study wine. He would do the brewing and I would just go to school and study wine, do the winemaking for our company. Um, and then it would all just work out happily ever after. That did not happen. Um, but but I your degree <laughs> did, yes, yeah, I which is great. The, the program regardless. Um, and then kind of traveled all over the world doing internships in different um, states and different countries. And then I came back to California about three years ago to work in Santa Cruz. 
I am. Um, that's interesting what you said about the the what people can put all these additives in wine and that it's not regulated. And the same thing goes for sex toy industry that it's actually not regulated by anyone. You can put whatever mm. ingredients you want in the U.S. and actually most countries except for Germany, I think, is the only one with standards for sex toys and what you can put in them. You can put whatever you want and it's not regulated. And they regulate children's products, right? Like. Children's products, what children put in their bodies or in their mouths, that's regulated. But the things that hu- adults, yeah, since the 50s, but the things that put adults put in their mouths or in their orifices are now heavily, or sorry, that's wrong. It's regulated for what goes in your mouth, but in your genitals is a different story. So hmm. you'll find sex toys that have aspartame and like weird stuff and rubber jelly and phthalates or phthalates or whatever you want to call it that you can, st- when you pick up the sex toy, it just smells like toxic, plasticky disgustingness and you put it on your body or in your body, it puts that into your bloodstream because that's a, you know, mm-hmm. your genitals are a mucous membrane. It soaks up whatever you put in there. And so I think, and, and I know that also like with other products, um, pharmaceuticals and lubricants and things, there's so many different loopholes for what people have to share that they're putting in things in, in the ingredients. Like you only have to say X amount. If you have X amount of this, you only have to, then, then you have to say you have this. And so I, I actually had no idea about wine, but I would imagine, of course, like oh, I know about the food industry and that that applies, but I didn't mm-hmm. even think about that with wine, that there could be all kinds of crappy things in there. No, yeah. Megan, what do you think about that? <laughs> Um, Do you have stinky sex toys? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, yeah, I I think that there there's a a place for all of those wines, but I think people, especially in California and definitely in the part that of California that we're in, in Santa Cruz and the Bay Area, um, people should realize that wine is an agricultural product the same way that their vegetables or fruits are, and they need to buy accordingly based on that. Super true. I definitely believe in putting good things into my body where every day, I mean, I drink a lot of wine. I consider that to be a goodness in my body, but um, I know it's just even the air we breathe, it's filled with chemicals. So I think it is important to put good things on your body, in your body. So from sex toys to wine. Okay, cool. Good to know about all the phthalates and things and natural wine being better for your body. We all need to be very cautious about what we're putting in our body. So that's great. So Megan, in regards to production, producing, making your wine itself, what, uh, like, what's your journey? Like, how do you, how do you do it? What makes it so amazing and different? So to me, the, the main part that really sets it apart is, um, the I am a one, one person show. Um, I do everything myself from um, coordinating what vineyards I'm going to work with to going to help pick the fruit and driving that um, that fruit, those grapes back to Santa Cruz and then press you drive yourself. I do all the driving myself. What? Yes. No way. Do you have like a truck, like a semi? I rent rent um, cars to do that. Um, and the main difference, at least in, in my experience from working at a lot of different wineries all over the world is that everything is on such a smaller scale. And when you're doing things on a small scale, it is truly, truly by hand. Um, I touch every single thing many, many times, every bottle. Um, it's not just one. You said you're going to go spin your champagne tomorrow yourself. Yeah. It, it's been spinning the, or your sparkling yes, wine. Yes, Sorry. The pet net sparkling wine. It's been <laughs> spinning for a couple of months and it's going to get all disgorged tomorrow. So, so. cool. Yes. Love it. Yeah. Um, and then, and you know, and if you're a small producer, you really don't have a lot of equipment or technology at your disposal. Everything is made, uh, the old world way and that to me that really sets the wine apart it doesn't mean it's necessarily better like of course some people are going to make bad wines that way but in my case i don't think i've done that yet which is great <laughs> um, your wines are tasty <laughs> we've loved them thank you both of them. and they're affordable you're not making them like eight hundred dollars for a bottle no i think i think wine is for everyone especially natural wine should be for everyone like i said wine is an agricultural product not a luxury product and how can people find your wine? Where can they buy? Um, they can buy it at marginswine.com. They can click the tab that says mailing list and join the mailing list and have first access to um, offers for those wines. And then if you're not um, 
into that. You can also see it at the store um, <laughs> throughout California. Send a postcard to Megan. Uh, <laughs> Please send me some wine. Here's my credit card. Yeah. No, don't do that. <laughs> um, and in and, and a few other states as well, which are listed on the website. But I definitely encourage people to join the mailing list. I can ship to most states. Y'all will be really happy with the wine. So definitely go to marginswine.com. Sign up for the mailing list. I did it. I'm on there. Amy's on there. Amy, what's your email, Amy? Just kidding. <laughs> so it's 555-5555. That's my email. <laughs> now you can all find me wherever you want. Um, all right. Yeah, Margins Wine. We're loving it. So hopefully you will too. And um, I just learned something new. I mean, I, April always knows a lot about wine because she drinks wine. Although, I mean, did you learn anything new today? I actually did because um, not only... I I didn't know that a lot of wines aren't natural or they get uh, mislabeled as natural because of the FDA regulations or deregulations or just not really looking at it. So it's kind of one of those things that um, needs more light shine on it. I want to know what I'm putting in my body. It scares me. Like the GMO labeling stuff. I hate that. I, I want to know more. All those loopholes. Um, well, I learned the same thing. That was the same thing. I had no idea that, I mean, I, I should I feel like I should have known that because I know that there's loopholes in all things. I should have known, April! <laughs> because I know that there's loopholes in all kinds of things that we're putting in our body. So that was really helpful and useful. And I always love my woman-owned and operated businesses. Um, and also hearing, like, the insider stories about how you, Megan, are doing all of the labor and, um, or most of the labor and... Yeah, that's. I think that's just awesome. So, thank you so much, Megan. Amy, I forgot to tell you, Megan. Um, we're we're working there tomorrow all day. I signed you up for a program. <laughs> so Surprise! Do I do, am I stomping grapes or what am I doing? Yeah, maybe <laughs> you're gonna do you do bottle turning, grape stomping. You're gonna do truck hauling. <laughs> I'm in. So <laughs> what day is it tomorrow? I'll clear my day. <laughs> Go Saturday. On. Yeah. All right. Saturday. I got it. Yeah. All right, everyone. So uh, marginswine.com. So you can go in, get on Megan's mailing list to be the, have first dibs on the new releases and all that lovely information. And our topic today for episode, which we're, we're, we'll get in there in a little bit. We're going to also answer a sex question. And we have like one or two other pieces we like to talk about before. But is love languages in relationships? It's, and it's great if you identify your love language as well uh -huh. with your partner and figure out what, what their is, language yeah. is and, and help them know what yours is. And then you can nourish and nurture each other through your language of love. And this and is, these are love. So language, love languages are ways that we feel love. And therefore, usually it's the way that we convey love. And they're very different for a lot of people. And there's a lot of different languages and it can be a big um, big difference in, in it would be kind of like a miscommunication between people like, oh, I, I tell you I love you all the time by touching you or by tell, actually f verbally saying I love you or by doing the dishes. Well, you should just know. Why wouldn't yeah. you know? I've why been with you for 10 years. Why don't you do these of things for me? Of course I love you. Um, well, and then the other person's like, well, that's not how I convey love. I tell you I love you by X, Y, and Z. So and this isn't just applied to sexual relationships or romantic relationships. You can use this with friends, with business Children, partners. even your kids. Parents. 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 Yeah, everyone has Absolutely. different love languages. Absolutely. So we will be getting into that, but let's do a sex question. Chip, what you got for the sex question? It's about fisting. It is about fisting. Woo. And we will call this person JK. 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 Subject is gentle fisting with a small palm. Is fisting pleasurable if fister has small palms? The, well... The woman in shades of gray <laughs> declined that in the contract with Mr. Gray. Um, they say, oh, so they say that they don't like it. That's what, yeah, yeah I, I okay. believe so. Do you believe that only women with largest vaginal openings are likely to actually enjoy it? Lastly, would men who have a small penis find their small hand to be via a viable alternative? Fisting. Okay, let's define fisting. So. Fisting is when all five of your fingers can enter the vaginal canal. And usually the palm is the whole hand. The usually. whole hand. So it goes over that palm. Yeah. So it, And I, I remember learning fisting when I did my fisty sex education training. And it was really, really funny. Everyone was like doing the fisting thing with their hand. And so you take your thumb and your pinky, you bring them as close together as possible 
possible, but like as connected to the other finger. So it's kind of all like some jabby, pointy one finger made of all five. And it then it looks like you're doing a hand puppet. Like a, it's like a, like yeah, a shadow puppet. puppet. Yeah. You're like, Ooh, you're like, I'm a duck. I'm a duck. I'm a duck. And then you insert the duck in very, very slowly over a long period of time with a lot of lube, with a lot of breath. And so it could take, you know, I don't know, 20 minutes to get even just the fingers in. And you would spend all this time, work, you know, opening it up with just one finger, then two, then three. And then eventually your whole hand makes its way in. And some people really enjoy this. Some people really enjoy that feeling of fullness of having this whole, just like you like a big cock or a big dildo, right? It's like this whole mm -hmm. hand in there filling up the vaginal canal. When it's fully ready, of course, it's not going to be like a two minute process. Um, and the vaginal canal, it changes, it shifts when people are aroused. It makes a lot of space. You know, the also cervix lifts up. Hormonally, it opens up. right? What's that? Hormonally as well? Hormonally too, but with arousal, we'll speak mostly mm. to arousal is that when someone's fully aroused, yes, the vaginal canal will open up and can receive a lot more of a larger of something. Now, if someone has a really big hand, that might be really hard to mm -hmm. deal with. Whereas like anal fisting, you could actually fit something pretty large in there because the anal canal can stretch a lot but the vaginal canal has a, although it can birth a baby so yeah if you can birth the baby you can get a fist in there right it just takes time yeah i mean like labor typically mm -hmm. takes hours and hours so yeah um you're dilating to the <laughs> the crown of the head and so it, i'm assuming with a fist depending on the size it would take I mean, time a fist is way and smaller lube, i would use lube just to be safe to lots let, yeah. of lube yeah go for get your uber lube for this one and what was the other thing so there was so is that it enjoyable was, well yeah. yeah so uh, yes the 50 shades of gray comment i just want to touch on that yeah uh, but please I wouldn't use, I wouldn't suggest using 50 shades of gray for any educational purposes. I think for erotic, if, if you're into the erotically charged statements, um, it's more of, a, it's a novel. So uh, novels are fic fiction typically, and I wouldn't associate most of the practices in the book with anything in, in real life. Um, some of the statements in the book, like about kegel balls, for instance, are completely inaccurate. false and yeah. inaccurate. So um, as far as that goes, um, it's entertainment. It's, it's not a, it's like an educator. Totally entertainment. Mm -hmm. So uh, just that being said, no shame. If you like that, awesome. But I wouldn't refer to it for any um, educational purposes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's helping to open the doors for a lot of people to understand some uh, interests that they may have that they didn't know that they had, and it's not a sex educator. So good point. And April. if it turns you on, fucking great. Hell Read yeah. it over and over again. So what they were asking was... Is it pleasurable? And right. So yes. Or only if only... Um, they Small asked if handed. only if women with largest vaginal openings are likely to enjoy it. And no. I think it just depends yeah, on the Yeah, we covered that with the vaginal canal right. can, can change. And, and yeah, I mean, yes, there is a proportion issue. Like if you have mm. a small vaginal canal and a huge fist, yeah, that might be an issue for some people. So size does matter in that regard. Um, and Just talk to them. Ask them if it feels good as you're doing that. And yeah. I think that would be the best way to And not everyone's it going to be into it. Uh, it's definitely a um awesomely edgy exploration and some people might be absolutely scared of the idea of it um and some people might be super turned on by it but the people i know that are into it they think it's really pleasurable they're into it because it's pleasurable it's that feeling of fullness like your whole fist is inside of me i can feel all of you and the things i've heard about actually being the fister is that it's super exhausting for your hand mm, like your fingers cramping. your wrist yeah everything is like oh and then especially if their vaginal canal is pulsing like imagine an orgasm all around your entire hand is just squeezing around it so yeah, i could imagine that that is yeah and definitely inducing some crampage yeah <laughs> be like, prepared oh. for a my journey. partner gets forearm cramps from Bang finger, finger yeah, banging from finger banging me. I hate finger banging. I know Can you do. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna try to get you through that though. Finger banging just reminds me of the first time I got finger banged and how unpleasant it was. And you it was playing in the background. You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. So let's do it. <laughs> that song is so, so bad. But that was the first time I had a finger inside of my pussy, and it was so not pleasurable and the person that i was having this experience with we were not like very connected it was just it was traumatizing it wasn't traumatizing that's the wrong word it just is not a pleasant memory. i just say finger bang because i think it's funny i use like the word bang and i do like the word bang i'm like hey you want to bang it out later yeah <laughs> <laughs> even if you're making sw slow sweet sweet love yeah it's i'm banging. like hey, we, you want to bang it slow. out bang slow bang slow bang or fast bang <laughs> Bang, bang, bang. 
Hey, Chip, I have a question for you. What's your question? My question is about the new atom cock ring from Hot Octopus. Dude. Um, so last night, because you gave me one. Okay. Last night, my partner and I, we tried to explore with it. And I know this because it's kind of like a teardrop ring. And teardrop ring means it's thick. It goes around. They all, all cock rings go around the testicles and the, an- and the anus. All, <laughs> all cock rings can. Can. Right. Yes. But this one was specifically designed to go around the testicles and the shaft. And then it has a part that presses in the perineum that like presses mm-hmm. into it. And it's silicone and it has a little stretch, but not a lot of stretch. So when, and I know this, you know, he was rock hard and you have to usually start with the balls first and, mm-hmm. but you can't get a rock hard cock with. No, yeah. it definitely start that. So I, tell our listeners, how do you put on this cock ring? So or first of all, in general? I do want to mention the Atom Plus. So this took us 18 months to um, actually engineer because we wanted it to be as anatomically correct as possible, meaning it will fit 95% of most body types, meaning homegrown cock users. Um, and the thing about it is it will get broken in and the more you stretch it. So if you want to like, if you're sitting in front of the television or the computer and like a workout, yeah, you can kind of stretch it and pull it. And the more you kind of work it out, it will become more like malleable and a little bit softer and more flexible. But, um, the, uh, cockering itself, what I always suggest with the atom plus, so start semi soft, semi-hard cock. So right in between, semi. That's what my boss calls it. Semi? I had a semi and I put it on. <laughs> I'm like, oh, noise. Nice. How was it? How do, how t- big are you? P.S. We talk about his cock, people's cocks all the time together on our meetings. My partner Dick takes size. it so funny. He's like, I just listened to some of your meeting this morning. That was interesting because he's like, so I had this user, one of my friends try the cock ring and, you know, they had like an eight centimeter dick. I'm like, that's, that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. But eight centimeters. I don't think that's big. I don't think so either. I didn't ask, but I don't know many centimeters. He, we, anyways, <laughs> we talk about it. And, uh, yeah, it's it's hilarious. But I'm getting off topic. But um, it's probably average. Probably. <laughs> I I don't know. Actually, I, I think it's like that big. Okay, that's not average. No, that's, I can't see your fingers. But that's, no, I don't. We don't, we don't know small. our centimeters. But um, so anyway, uh, the the best thing to do is have a semi. So if you're not if you're completely hard, move on from using the cock ring at that time because um, it's actually not going to be fun to try to put it on. So semi-hard. So kind of have a plan or intention to use it with your partner. And then once it's half mass, um, what you do is turn the cock ring. And if you all go on to um, hot octopus with two S's.com, you actually can see the Atom and Atom Plus, A-T-O-M. Atom Plus is the double. And you can get 15% off if you use shameless sex. Uh, lowercase um, at time of checkout. So definitely go. They're amazing value. They're super sleek, super elegant. The silicone is like so soft and feels great and it will enhance your sexual experience 100%. My partner and I have been using it on the regular and it's been awesome. But slide the I, the cock ring because it is that oval shape. So um, throw it to the side like you're taking a picture horizontally with your iPhone versus vertically. You know what I'm you know yes, what I mean, Amy? I'm just asking you yep. because um, I know that last night you had it was tricky. Mm-hmm. Turn it to the side and then um, put the balls in first and then kind of get the cock through there and then kind of stretch it. I know it's not super stretchy when you first take it out of the box, but stretch it around, take your time, and then shift it so it's vertical. So that top portion is going to be the plus minus or on the top, mm-hmm. um, sitting on the abdomen, more or less. And this applies to pretty much all cock rings. You start with the balls first yes. and then the cock. And all cock rings are designed to be worn around the balls and the cock, although you don't have to, but that's how they're designed. I would suggest if it does feel extra difficult, get a little bit of lube and just squirt a little bit of lube on it. It'll help because silicone is, it has a tackier, it doesn't have a tacky feel. It's super smooth and soft, but it does kind of drag the skin or pull the skin. If you have hair as well, it could pull that a little bit. So get a little bit of lube. If you don't have access to lube, some saliva, just spit on there and get it sexy, but awesome. that'll work too. And if you're not into trying the double to start off with, you have the Atom, it's like 85 bucks before um, your discount, but that one, it, it can just be worn as a shaft ring and mm-hmm. you can start with that. It's only one motor versus the two on the Atom Plus. But honestly, I have to tell you, I helped design this product because I thought that cock rings, they lacked functionality when when I have a drawer full. From when I worked at Pure Pleasure from over the years, I have a drawer full and none of them are powerful enough. This one is super well, it's so well made and it's super effective because it also thinks of vulvas. It has like that area that I showed you. It's like a little ridge with mm-hmm. uh, the Hot Octopus logo that's just like indented that gives you some texture and it feels fucking great. 
on your, so on your vulva. To try it. Yeah, just not with a hard dick. So now, no, though, turn it to the side when you're going to put it on, put the balls in, shaft after. And then once you kind of get the cock in, you can start to stimulate the cock again to get it hard yeah. and then turn it on and then you can, you know, do your thing. I'm excited to explore it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah. check it out. If y'all are out there looking for an enhancement tool, no joke. I've also given a couple away. Um, and maybe we'll do a little contest. We should do a, an Instagram contest to give our listeners. I'll come up with something and I'll and I'll send it out on social media. So check out our Ooh, Instagram, yeah. Shameless Sex Podcast. Uh, Instagram will have a contest of some sort. Easy. Yeah, if you easy subscribe, contest. then you can be a part or a follow. Follow. It's a follow. Yeah. yeah. And we also will probably have it at Pure Pleasure, right? Yeah. yeah. You guys have it. Uh, sorry. Y'all have it at Pure Pleasure. I think it shipped out this week. Oh, um, So yep, we so already had, it. I was actually doing a demo in Pure Pleasure this last week. And uh, just of the new products because there's some new staff members and um, uh, consumer heard the the they entire really presentation it, right? yeah, and they yeah. pre-ordered it because awesome. she was super excited. She's like, "That sounds awesome!" I'm like, it's literally the best thing ever. Yeah. So if you're local Santa Cruz person, go to Pure Pleasure or PurePleasureShop.com as well, and you can get I think 15 percent off. Yeah, right. We do 15 percent off if you use coupon code Shameless Sex PP in all caps, and you can get the same thing and all kinds of other things like Uber Lube, which we talk about all the time. And I don't know if we really talked about this, but we're going to talk about this more because Pure Pleasure is um, the store that April 10, 11 years ago got her start in the sex industry. Um, April and I were friends before working at Pure Pleasure. I opened Pure Pleasure with my mom. April was my BF. Boy, boyfriend and best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I hired her on the spot and she was the manager of Pure Pleasure uh, for about a year. And then she went on to go work for Fun Factory and now Hot Octopus. And I still currently co-own Pure Pleasure with my mom. So it's a mother-daughter owned sex shop. It is a... It's um, so cute. And it's that's beautiful. The, I mean, when you think of a sex shop, a lot of times... You and think of like... Porn booths. I call them the sticky floor stores yeah. where you walk in and you're like, did someone just or je- like rubber it jelly all over? dicks with all veins. Right, and all the clamshells and we, you're like, yeah. what? We this store that. is so gorgeous. You walk in, you feel like you're shopping in a spa. That was what turned me on to it in the, in the beginning when you were describing your business plan and what you wanted to do for not only the sex toy world, but for people and their comfort and shopping. So I was really behind that vision and working in there. It was always really cool. Like the clientele shopping were really interested in kind of expanding their it's sexual awareness is yes. the thing. It's educational. And there's workshops all the time too. So if yeah. you're local and you want to check out, check out Pure Pleasures workshops because you offer a wide array of different topics. Some are free, some are, they cost a little bit, but nothing more than 10 or 15 dollars 20 bucks 20 bucks sometimes 25 april <laughs> it's a little off in the i'm going off 2008 prices yeah. <laughs> inflation <laughs> that's when she started there damn uh, it but we also have some online classes too if you don't live there you can go to purepleasureshop.com dot com and you can take um like my orgasmic bliss how to please a pussy class or my orgasmic bliss how to please a cock class um all online from no ma- anywhere in the world so but if you're doing a right thing already by listening to a podcast to enhance your to enhance your life, your sex life, your your life in general. And I think that also education, sex ed is cool. And toys also are a great enhancement tool. So spice it up, learn some new things. And speaking of that, this was the, we want to talk about the five languages of love today, yes. which um, originally it was something that I wasn't aware of. And you had mentioned it years ago before we ever started podcasting. And I was like, what are you talking about? And you, uh, when I was w- married, married yeah. and, and, <laughs> I was so intrigued by what you were saying that I started looking into it and it made so much sense. So there's five languages and I started um, becoming familiar with now my ex-husband, his language of love. Um, And it is something that once you figure out what, and some people have more than one language. I believe I have two. Um, My partner has all of them. Right. My partner has two. He's all about quality time and touch, uh-huh. but quality time is his thing, which is hard for me because I travel so much for work. Mm. So I have to really give him a lot of my time, make sure it's quality time when I'm present. Like Not just like, hey, what's up? No. Oh, hey, I'm going to do my thing. I'm doing laundry. Bye. So can you, Amy... Talk, Talk about, about love languages? Yes. yes. So there's a book that is called The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. We have it at purepleasureshop.com. And it essentially states that there are five love languages. And let me just tell you that the book has some Christian undertones. It does. That so was the only thing I wanted to God say. God talk. But yeah. if you can get through the God talk, and it, or maybe you're into it, but if you, as long as you can be patient with that, just there's so much wonderful information there on 
um, the way that we convey and feel loved. And that's what it is. The, the way that I feel loved is going to be different from the way you feel loved. And the way that I feel loved is usually how I convey love. But of course, if you feel love a different, loved a different way than I feel loved, the way I convey my love is maybe not speaking your language. So the five love languages are touch, um, t- quality time, words of affirmation, acts of service, and gifts. So touch, that's a clear one. Touch, like, and that's my love language. It's yeah. I when I want to tell my partner I love them, I touch them, I squeeze them, I grab their shoulders, I kiss them all over their face, I kiss them on their neck, I give them hugs, I just hold them. Do you expect it in return, or you just? Um, yeah, I need, I need, you need it. not it. just expect. I need it. Sorry, uh, but I, okay, I need it to feel loved. If I don't have that. I can't, I don't feel, it's hard for me to feel loved and I actually can't even hear them. An example of this would be, if my partner was on a business trip for a week, they came home and they sat down and just wanted to talk and we didn't share a lot of touch. I honestly couldn't hear them Mm -hmm. because my system is like, I don't feel loved, I don't feel loved, I don't feel loved. But if he were to touch me, hold me, pet me for like five minutes or while he was trying to have a conversation with me, then I would really hear him because I would be able to feel the love. Right. Um, that makes and, sense. And touch will, you'll break it down to different categories, right? Some people need more sexual touch. Some people need more sensual touch. Some people need more healing touch. What's and the difference between sensual and sexual? Sexual is sex. It's like, uh, there's, there's this, like, the it's going to be, banging me. Yes. I mean, there's going to be more <laughs> of an intention towards something more sexual. That, so it's going to be more like nipples, genitals, or or everyone can redefine what, what sexual means for them. But there's a sexual component to it, highly erotic. Whereas mm. sensual is more like, I'm just going to you know rub my hand up your leg and just warm up your body's senses and just share a little bit of like connected, slow touch. Then maybe healing touch is a massage as I want to make your body feel good. And there's also loving touch, which is something that's just going to convey love, you know, like a hug or something like that. And there's this book called um, The Women's Anatomy of Arousal, which talks about this. And it's my favorite book to talk about women's like women and arousal. It's so good. We have that at Pure Pleasure as well. I've been super horny all day. You have been horny all day? Yeah. Do you want me to touch you? <laughs> okay, we're not talking about that right now. Damn it. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to share that with you. So, okay, got it. And so you so prefer, touch. so something for you, so and it's in the language of love, though, the touch isn't defined. It's whatever you feel is it's good for you. It's definition, right. right? You get to choose if touch is a love language for you, and you will know it by, this is how I feel loved. If you touch me, I feel loved. And this is also how, when I want to tell people I love them, this is usually what I gravitate right. towards. And your that's your primary. That's Do you feel like primary. you have any other underlying? I have a secondary, which is quality time. Oh, so okay. quality time is exactly that. We spend quality time together. We just like you said, your partner wants you know not just hey, how was your day? What'd you do? Is so how are you? Right, connecting, you know? fully and, connecting. And how are we in our relationship? Present. Turning off your phone. What are your dreams? And you know what are some adventures we want to go on? You know things like that. I would love to touch on that for a second because that is important. And we've talked maybe about this before, but time spent with your partner, just being physically present isn't necessarily the, the it, it's not necessarily something that is as meaningful as when it's quality, where it's, you're doing something where you're actually connecting. You're not looking at the television. You're not doing the laundry, the dishes. Maybe you're cooking dinner together, but you're actually being quality. You're, you're connecting on a, on a deeper level than just um, being physically in the same room with them. Yeah, I mean, just being side by side is not quality. No. Quality is connection. I tell my partner this because sometimes I'm like, yo, we actually uh, had a, like a, a moment where above the TV, yeah, and I was like, "Hey, uh, I'm not asking for more of your time. I just want the co- time that we spend together to be a l- little bit more quality." Because I felt like there were a few days where we were physically present and with each other, like pretty often, but none of it was quality to me, and I f- I was feeling distance. And I'm like, "This is so weird. We're we're you know we're spending so much time together, but the time that we're spending isn't isn't of quality." So something to consider with your partner if that's their language of love or your language of love. Ask for that. Be specific about hey, let's just turn our phones on airplane mode. Turn off the TV even for twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. Just sit down and fully connect. Yeah, yeah, and that's and some people that's not important, but for a lot of people it is. Yeah, and so and that's a big one if you're doing long distance relationships that can be hard. So that's why. 
Um, you know, FaceTime phone conversations can be helpful. Like touch for long distance converse or conversations, uh, relationships. <laughs> yeah. That's a hard one. That's a really hard one. And if you are in a long distance relationship and you are connecting, ter- don't answer emails or other text messages or have the TV on in the background. Fully tune into what the person's saying. I found that I used to do that when I wouldn't talk to my girlfriends for a long time that lived in other states and I'd be answering emails <laughs> and then... I fully felt bad because they would be telling it, opening up about something, and I was working. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Wow. That and it's, that's hard. not fair to them, and yeah. they're they're spending the energy on sharing with me. So I've definitely um, been way better about tuning right into that. So, and so the next one, what did, what was yours? Your first one? Uh, wasn't quality time. It was my, my okay, primary is no, no. My that's my partner. Prim- okay. Mine is words of affirmation. Right. So words of affirmation. So these are the things that we say that gar- let someone know that we love them, that they're beautiful, that they're sexy, that we're into them. These are praise words. These are appreciations. These are things that make people feel special because we know April wants to feel special. Yeah. So this is that's my I thing. love you. I miss you. You're beautiful. You're sexy. I can't stop thinking I about like when you. They put me like I'm the best my yeah, partner does it now he's like you're the best person ever and he always says that because he knows I like it I'm like, even if it's not totally you don't mean it because I know you have like you know three daughters <laughs> I just still want to know that you love me and I'm your favorite you yeah. know like in in a way I think it's comes from a lot of childhood stuff but totally and this yeah. also if you listen to episode two on our podcast don't mind the sound because we had shitty mics then but <laughs> um it talks all about the core erotic theme and that's where this ties in because some people's core erotic theme is to feel the best or special. And that's why this love language would be really helpful to help that person achieve their core erotic theme of how they want to feel. So words of affirmation are a big one for a lot of people. For me, they're actually not that big. I, I want them and I need them, but touch and quality time are 10 times more um, important. Touch is my secondary, my, my second go-to. I, I have to on some level. I was never really touched ever as a kid. And, um, now I go through with my with with I just bring up my partner again because it's funny because I talk about this with him often. I'm like, if I wanted another friend just to hang out with, I could get have I have plenty. I'm like, I need to be touched because you're the only one that really like I can like spoon or hug or love. It's I, I get like snarky like that. He calls me Doctor Snarko when I Dark. say, Hey Snarko, what's up? I'm like, that's right. I just need a little touch. Doctor Snarko. Doctor Snarko. Well, and it's the, and these things come. It's not just like some simple need. Like oh, I want I want touch but whatever it's not a big deal this runs at the core of us and it really speaks to how we feel about ourselves and our fullness in life and so it's not something to be undervalued it's something to be um, considered and and verbalized and also exactly appreciated and shared and you communication to ask for what you want we talked about that again asking for what you want and in a way that can be heard by your partner where it's not like why won't you know that why don't you know that about me like I like to be touched. you don't touch me enough why don't you touch me enough it's like hey I need this to feel love just as you were saying I'm or you can start with the I feel you know I'm I'm feeling really disconnected from you and and what I'm really desiring is more touch because that helps me feel really connected to you how can we find more ways to share a touch together right and touch is just one of the many examples, but words of affirmation is another thing. Same thing. I'm feeling really disconnected from you, and I feel I'm de- I'm desiring more words of affirmation. I'm desiring to hear more praise, more appreciation, because that's what helps me to feel loved. And here are some things that you can say to throughout the day. Send me text messages. Put post-its all over the house. You know, just give me a call, or when I see you, just look me in the eyes and tell me that you're the most beautiful man, woman, whomever you've seen. And put out what you want to get. I always, I, I do this in my life. I, I put out what I want to get back. I don't ever expect anything in, in return, whether it's uh, an act of grace within, a f- like with friends or with a work situation. I never, I never sacrifice anything I love to give. But I always think that um, if you, what you put out, like putting out so much love and, 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 good energy and positivity it'll come back to you and especially in your relationship if you nurture it with with a lot of love and and asking then you're going to get it back i mean it's inevitable and so the fourth one will say acts, acts of service, service. Oh, so acts of service is i get home and you did the dishes and you made a meal and you cleaned the house and you took the dog for a walk and you're like 
you know, honey, I you, you don't need to worry. Just lay on the couch. I took care of everything for you. Um, or you took you took care of the kids, you know, things like that, where you, you really stepped up your game to take care of things. And that's how I feel loved is, wow, they really care about me because they, they took care of things and I can just relax and not worry. Uh, this is not one... F- for me either because I'm you you either because <laughs> no, we're the I just do it type. all myself yeah. I'm like I already did that I did that I did that and I did that and my partner's like what but it's big and that's actually our uh, that's our shadow side yeah. is that we're like we can't rely on anyone so we I have know. to do it on it's our own it's true so and I'm trying to let go of that but I'm yeah. totally misindependent when it comes out I'm like me too it's, I, and it's yeah. a little we're a little extreme in that but I definitely we're both know type a, a as they come that's why they call us a type a with daddy either. issues who yeah. decided that we can't rely on our male figures to do anything I have that voice in the back I was like, I don't need anybody. I, I got my man. Yeah. And I do that when I get like angry or I'm super hormonal. I'm like, oh, fuck that. I don't need anybody. Yeah. Don't say that to your partner. He doesn't no, like no. I, I learned. My he wants lesson. to feel needed too. So. Yes, he does. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, this is a common one for people. And again, when we talk about love languages, you might not identify with this, but consider if you're partnered or have multiple partners, what are their love languages? And is their love language different? And understand that you two are different, probably, unless you're both touch monkeys. That's great. Life is easy. You just touch the shit out of each other. But for the most part, you're going to have differences. And so now it's a matter of thinking outside of the box of, okay, here's my love language. Here's theirs, or they have multiples. How can I speak their language? And I know that I feel loved one way, but I have to think outside of myself and give them their language. Um, so it's, it's really just a matter of getting creative and having these conversations and thinking outside of our own desires. It's, and I think it's really important to honor your own needs, but we go through this life and I, I, I am so guilty of this. We run through life and we're, we're busy, 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 busy. No one's, no one. How many people do you meet that are like, I'm not busy at all. I'm just kicking it. Oh, I know a couple of those people. I'm like, what? what I, I don't. And I, I mean, maybe they just don't admit it, but I I don't know. I feel like everybody needs to take a minute and understand what you value. Again, we're trying to really focus on what makes you feel good. And these identifying languages of love really do help improve how you feel, not improve your relationship, but how you feel in in your relationship. And we can all be busy, 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 work, 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 and or take care of our kids or do this for the rest of our lives. Just taking a few minutes every day. It's like meditation. It's nourishing your soul. And that might seem hippie, but we all have souls. We're all just particles of energy so it is important crystals to gems gems yeah. and crystals and they shut it off <laughs> <laughs> so the la- i just wanted Last to touch one, on yeah. that because i remind myself of that all the time because i am about as high energy as they come hence the reason i drink so much wine so okay back to gifts so gifts, gifts. this is the fifth, lang- fifth language fifth and gifts. final language of love is receiving gifts and so gifts is something that is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I want to tell my partner I love them and I buy them a gift and now they feel loved. Now, so it would be, you know, any sort of gift. So acts of service is different. I do a thing to show you I love you, but a gift is like, I bought you this really nice thing that you, or I it, I thought, I found this feather on the street and it made me think of you. Yeah. It's like a gift. Exactly. It doesn't have to just be purchased. Right. That's good. Really good point, Chip. Very good point. So it's something that you, um, that you, I made you giving. this flower crown yeah. because I love you so much. It's a gift for you. Yeah. And I think, I, I, I think that, um, it's actually quite a sweet thing to give someone something. I have a friend that does that with me. She finds things in like a microplane. I was complaining about wanting a microplane forever. What's a microplane? It's um, it's a cooking tool that you can zest lemons. Um, kind of. Uh, Should we be sponsored by them? No, I mean, I'm, I already have one, so I'm good. I can buy you one if you really are into it. Use zest lemons. It's just a great cooking tool. Um, you can, I use it for garlic, uh, shaving garlic, and it just, it's a microplane. It just micro, micros up whatever you want on food. But I had mentioned it that I love zesting lemons, and she, for like she it for you. random time, she just gave me a microplane. I was like, that is so, like months later. I was like, that is so sweet because it's something I didn't want to buy for myself. So anyway. Is, um, so is gifts one of your love languages? 
No, I don't think so because I never expect any gifts. I really love getting gifts. My mom always said that I was always like, yeah, like I showed the most excitement ever out of any kid ever about getting anything. Well, but even aside from expecting, if someone gives you a gift, like if your partner buys you a gift, do you feel just so deeply loved or you feel like you can feel more loved in other ways? Um, no, I don't think it's one of mine. Yeah. You would feel, you would feel loved and considered, but there's other things that are more important. Right. Yeah. The acts of service, probably, I feel like more, if I had to rate my languages, like a, a one, two, three, four, five, I feel like my first and second, I already mentioned, I think quality time would be my third because time is really special and we don't have a lot of it. Then probably acts of service and then gifts. Yeah. But that can always change. It doesn't always have to be the same, right? Yeah. I mean, I think your I mean, languages could shift. shift. I, for my partner, every love language is important. He loves gifts. He loves and needs words of affirmation. I made him some chili the other day. And he loved it. The brisket chili, paleo loves chili. It. He mm. loves it. And quality time is so important. And touch actually wasn't his big ones until he started dating me and I'm the touch person. Yeah. So he had to learn my love language. And so that brings me to kind of like the closing piece of this that's really valuable is, and we said this before, but as we've talked about this, or maybe you could again, read the book, the five love languages by Jerry, Gary, 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 <laughs> not Jerry, Gary Chapman. And we have it at pure pleasure. Um, and understand, figure out what your love languages or love languages are and if you have a partner, you can share that with them and help them figure out what theirs is and then get creative and start making lists together of ways that you can show each other or make each other feel loved through conveying these love languages. You, know, you will give them theirs and they will give them yours. And it might be hard at first. Like for me, my partner likes gifts and everything else to every fucking love language. <laughs> gifts are not a natural thing for me because I don't feel love through gifts. I like right. gifts, but I'm not like, oh my God, you love it. I'm like, that feels awesome. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. And that's about it. Yeah. Um, so what I do is I put a note in my phone. I have a reminder once a month that says, buy your partner a thoughtful gift. You know, it's not just anything. Or just find something that you, reminds you. It will remind me. For the next week, I'll think about it. I have and a then cool I'll coral piece I'll give you to give to him. Oh, he'll probably before like Before you leave today. Yeah. And, and I do that also with words of affirmation. We just got over a barrier of him needing a lot of words of affirmation. It's not my primary language. And now I'm incorporating. And of course, you want it to be authentic, but I'm incorporating more. So that the moral of the story is we think outside of ourselves. We figure out what our love language is. What are our partners or parents or whomever, you know, anyone in your life? How can we think outside of ourselves and give that to them to make them feel loved because don't we I mean it's part of spreading the love and to help connected. them feel love you can't, you can't make, make anyone them, but right. help them help yes. them feel good yes. help them feel whole help yeah. them feel and, and loved even purely just, even I mean aside from that it's just it's doing a nice service for someone it's, it is. it's really just it I want to good do something nice for you when people you when you help people feel good I love mm -hmm. that I hold doors for people all the time because I even too. if they're far away yeah. And the other day, like waiting for two minutes. And <laughs> I, I sometimes I I think it's and this has been a thing for me since college. But I like uh, being polite is I, I think a huge human gesture. We have seven point six billion people on the planet. And the other day, some I was holding a bunch of groceries and I was going to a, a coffee shop, not in Santa Cruz. I was near San Jose, and um, I wanted to. I was carrying some bags because I didn't go back to my car before. Anyway, that's why I had a bunch of bags. So I was like wanting to get a coffee somehow, but had a handful. But this guy walked in and didn't even hold the door for me. And so I grabbed the door like hard, like, and I opened it. I said, hey, thanks. That was a really nice gesture. <laughs> and he looked back. Passive like, oh, aggressive. I'm so, I know, but I was so irritated. I was like, dude, take a look around you. You're not alone on this planet. Like live amongst each other. If you're out and about, like be mindful, look around you. And I wasn't trying to, it was passive aggressive Very for passive sure. Aggressive. But I didn't know the dude and it really irritated irritated me because I come on it's like giving up your subway seat to a pregnant person okay just yes. be mindful you're and, not alone and I, th I think the um the higher row would be to approach them with a um hi so I noticed that you're kind of in a hurry and I was coming with arms full of things and I just want to let you know that I would have really appreciated it if you would have held the door open for me maybe you didn't notice me but I just want to put that out there I just needed a quick go-to <laughs> solution I was like hey I wasn't super well, rude about it no I wasn't in his face I said hey like 
Like I just kind of, I wasn't even snappy. I, mean, I was just, I was irritated. And though. I've had moments like that too, of course. Like way to be a dick, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So granted, I'm outing myself. I, I'm not very um, good about, I wear my emotions on a sleeve. So sometimes when I'm a little bit perturbed, frustrated, I do kind of, I didn't just, lash out though. It wasn't like I was like, hey, the world? Like, I was like, yo. Thanks for that. Thanks for being polite. But I'm hoping that hopefully... <laughs> That guy maybe will open some doors in the future. Yes. My uh, my only two cents would be that there's a more direct way than passive aggressive. I do agree with you, Ami. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Do you need me I'll to work on that. Do you need I'm me working to on touch that. you and tell April, you're beautiful. I love you. You're smart. You're empowered. You know what? You're so If strong. I had a redo, I, I would redo <laughs> it like this. Like, hey, excuse me. Uh, next time, it'd be awesome if you could just look around maybe and yeah. and see if there's anyone around you that needs a helping hand. Yeah, I like that. Please and thank you. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Someone's at the door now. <laughs> we have a friend here. We have a friend. Um, anything else you want to say about love languages? Um, I think that this is really, really good, vital information. Um, and hopefully you got something out of it because I know that when I learned about this, this changed my life it and, is my, and my relationship. I can really hear and understand my partner because it gives me tools to think outside of myself. 100%. Uh, if you aren't into buying the book at Pure Pleasure, you can also get it on Audible. That's what I have it on Audible, but um, because some people don't want to buy physical books. Either way, it's available to you. So check it out. Five languages of love, five love languages, and tune in every Tuesday, everyone, for another episode of Shameless Sex. We really do value, love, honor, and respect our listeners. So if you have a question for us, Feel free to email us at any time at shamelesssexpodcast at gmail.com. You can also visit us on our website, shamelesssex.com. Also, we have some pretty exciting news. I think it's super exciting, right? We've never done this before. I'm excited. We're doing a YouTube live video where we, where we will answer your sex questions. And we have so many sex questions. So we'll be doing YouTube live where you can see our lovely faces. And we won't just be voices humming in your earbuds or wherever you are as you do your daily drive and you can ask all of your questions anonymously we won't say your name on the air and if yep. you have something you know you're desiring to tune in to ask us about uh that maybe you didn't get a chance to write an email you can just tune in directly and yep. talk to us and we are going to be live on april 20th yep that's 4 20 all you 4 stoners 20 Whee! 4 p.m pacific standard time that's 5 p.m mountain 6 p.m central 7 p.m eastern standard time and it will have a chat box so you can actually send us your direct questions live and we can answer them there we'll also come there fully equipped with some of the questions that you all have already sent us so you said box we, and come in one sentence box and come and come in box yeah. in my box nice. uh-huh yeah. So if you come in my box, then <laughs> <laughs> then uh, if you've already wrote us some questions that we have not answered yet, this is a good opportunity to uh, tune in and maybe we'll answer your questions there. And just so you all know, if you cannot ch- chime in live, it will actually be, it will stay on our YouTube channel. So it's recorded and will stay there. You just can't ask us live questions. Right. But you can always email us at shamelesssexpodcast at gmail.com or go to our website, shamelesssex.com. And ask us a question. Also, um, if perhaps you don't have a question, but you want to tune in, you may learn something that you didn't know. So it's always good to just check us out, what we're doing. Always room to learn. So you all want to know how to do this? How do you do it? How do you do it? Go to YouTube and go look up Pure Pleasure Shop. Pure Pleasure Shop is a wonderful sex shop that I am co-owners of. And April got her start in the sex toy I industry. Shall there. In. Um, so if you go to Pure Pleasure Shop uh, in the YouTube search box, it should pop up there. Or you can go to our website at shamelesssex.com and we'll have a link directly on our homepage so that you can click on that and go and ask your sex questions or listen to sex questions or see our Lovely, very, um, I don't want to say interesting, exotic, fun, playful, wonderful. I think it's all of the above. Yeah. (laughs) I took a little from column A, B, and C. So So tune in. And that's 4.20, 4 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, y'all. Can't wait to see you or hear you or be there. And if you haven't, we would love if you could take a minute to give us a review on iTunes. We read every review. We look at every review. Sometimes we read them on the air. So uh, we appreciate your time. I know everyone is busy, but uh, we really love you. So anything else, Amy? I'm good. 
Awesome. So we'll see you all next Tuesday. Ciao for now. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.